Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. It's Fountain Pen Focus Day. We're going to be focusing on this. This is the Platinum 3776 Century. This is in the Burgoyne colour. Join me now down on the mat. We'll take a look at the pen. We'll do some size comparisons, some weights and measures, a writing sample. Then I'll give you my thoughts and some scores on this pen. Welcome down to the mat. Here we've got the Platinum 3776 Century. Let's have a look around the body. So at the top, we've got a dome in this gorgeous transparent Burgoyne colour. I really like this. I think it's nice that you can just see hints through the cap of what's going on. So we come down, then we've got the clip. The clip band goes all the way around. Clip itself, gold coloured, nice and springy, bit stiff though. For me, it doesn't matter because I generally don't actually use the clips because I don't put the pens into shirt pockets. If I turn it around here so we can see the actual cap. So the cap, very gently tapering out until roughly about halfway down the cap and it seems to go straight. Then we come down and we've got here the band. So we've got a very thin band first. Then below that, we've got this wider band so if I can get to the start, so we've got Made in Japan near the back. Then we've got 3776 Century. And then Platinum. And back to Made in Japan. To me, this band isn't really very central with the clip. So that could have been tightened up a bit, I think. So we come from that band We've got a little bit more of the resin in the cap and then it goes straight down into the body. The way this resin is, it doesn't feel like there's a step down. I know there is because I can see it. And if I'm fetching my finger up from the other direction, I can feel it. But coming from the cap down, you don't feel that step off. Come down to the body, again, slightly translucent. So we can see through there. We can see that we've got a converter inside. This is tapering down till we get to another gold coloured ring. And then we've got a rounded end on the bottom. All in all, nice looking pen. I quite like the look of it. I love the colour. And I love the way that the gold accents that colour. Let's take off the cap. So it takes, there's half, that's one. One and a half, about one and three quarter turns for the cap to come off. Then that reveals this 14 karat gold nib. I like the platinum nib. It looks really nice. We've got a little bit of a border at the top. We come down and there we've got 3776. We've got the P for platinum, 14K, and it's a medium nib. And it's very small. I can hardly make it out, but I think below the M we've got 525, but I may be wrong with that. It's that small. I can struggle in to actually see it. The section is very small. We've got a lip on the bottom, then it looks like there's a slight concaveness to it, but it is very short. I mean, it's about a finger width. But when I'm holding it, it's quite nice. Because I hold my pens down near the bottom, my finger there just rests on that lip. The lip, it's not big enough that it digs in, so it's quite comfy. And my fingers, as you can see there, my finger and thumb fit quite nicely in that section. Unposted, I do find the pen feels a little bit short. It's usable and I tend to use it unposted. The pen will post and if I'm doing a longer writing session, I will post it. Posted, it's a nice length. The cap doesn't back weight it. It feels nice and comfy to use. As I've already said, we have a converter. This is a platinum converter and all the fittings are metal. This would be nice with the nature of this material. It would be nice if you could have eyedroppered this, but obviously it's not possible. So let's pop the pen back together. What I'm going to do is fetch in some size comparisons. So here we are with the size comparisons. I'm going to try doing my size comparisons a little bit different. Rather than talking about them, I'm just going to really show you and point out anything major. So here we've got Pilot Metropolitan, 
and the Lamy Safari. All three pens look the same size. Let's take the cap off. Unposted, that platinum we can see very obviously a lot smaller. Let's post them. Posted, the platinum now roughly the same size as the Metropolitan. Go to swap over, fetching some pens that are in the same price range. The pens I've brought in, there's a Narwhal Key West, that was 196 Australian dollars. The Platinum 3776, that was 200 Australian dollars. And the Twisby Draco, that was 215 Australian dollars. Both the Narwhal and the Twisby are steel nibs, whereas the Platinum, that's got a gold nib. Let's look at them unposted. Unposted, Platinum obviously a lot smaller. Let's pop the caps back on. With the caps on, same story, the platinum, smaller of the three. Going to swap over again, I'm going to fetch in two gold nibbed pens so we can compare three gold nibbed pens now. The pens I've brought in, also by Japanese makers, we've got a Sailor Pro Gear Slim, that was 224 Australian dollars. The platinum, we've already said, 200 Australian dollars. And also a Pilot Custom Heritage 92 at 270 Australian dollars. The Platinum and Pilot, roughly the same size. Let's look at these unposted. Unposted, you know, we've got a one, two, three in size. The difference is really between these pens, both the Sailor and the Platinum, they're cartridge converters, whereas the Custom Heritage 92, that's a piston filler. Let's look at them posted. With the pens posted, the Platinum and the Pilot, roughly the same size, and I do need to use both these posted if I'm doing a longer writing session, but they are both usable unposted. The Sailor, I find that's just too uncomfortable to use unposted, so I always use that one posted. Going to get these out of the way, and we'll fetch in the Rule of Measuring. Here we've got the Rule of Measuring, let's fetch in the pen. So, first with the cap on. That comes in at 13.9 centimetres. Uncapped. There we're talking 11.9 centimetres. Posted. 15.4 centimetres. Widths. The width of the body. That comes in about 1.2 centimetres. The cap, 1.48 centimetres. The section goes from 1 up to 1.5, so not a big difference in width in this section. Let's clear this out, fetch in the scales of weighing. Here we've got the scales of weighing. The whole pen, 25 grams. The cap, 11 grams. The body, 14 grams. Remember, there is a little bit of ink in this pen. Let's clear these scales off and fetch in the notepad of testing. Here we've got the notepad of testing. This is our huge paper, 100 GSM paper. This is in an A4 notebook. Let's take the cap off and do some writing. So we've got here a platinum 3776, and this is the century. It's got a medium nib and it's 14 karat gold. Cost me 200 Australian dollars. The ink is by Diamine. And it's Oxblood. I was a little bit concerned when I put this in, but I actually think it's quite a nice match. So let's fetch the pen in there so we can put them next to each other. This is a Japanese medium. If I pull the notepad down a bit, here we can see my pen from last week, which was the Jinhao 159 with the medium. And just look at the difference in the line width between the two of them. I do actually prefer that medium from Jinhao, but I like wide pens. I like broad nibs usually. Let's look at drying times. So we go immediate. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. Thirty seconds, and that's more or less dry. This paper, it's not coated, and there is a bit of a texture to it, which helps with the writing. 
but also may help with a faster drying time. Let's move the mic and write a sentence. The nib, it feels very hard. It feels like, really, it feels like a nail. And I actually like it. I'm getting some really nice feedback. It's not like I get on a lot of my pens, so it might be something you need to really try out yourself. But personally, I think it's really enjoyable to write with. Let's see if there's any line variation. So this is with no pressure. And then I'm gonna add some pressure. So I am getting a slightly wider line. Let's do some S's. Again, I'm seeing some variation, but I am pressing quite hard and I wouldn't want to do that when I was actually writing. Finally, flow. Yeah, that feed and that nib, it keeps really nicely. We're getting a nice line, nice consistent. So what are my scores and thoughts on this? I've changed my scoring. So I've had a few comments about some different categories to add in. So I've added in two new categories to my scores. So we've now got six to look at. The first one is the looks. I really like this. I love this material. I love the way the trim looks so nice with this gorgeous red material. I like the slight translucency to it. It fetches a little bit of visual interest. I like the nib, the way it looks. It's simple, but it still attracts the eye. And it's that nice gold colour. It's one of my issues with the Pilot Custom Heritage 92. It's plated, so you don't actually know it's a gold nib. It looks like it's more like a steel type nib. Whereas this looks really nice. Really enjoy the looks. Really like looking at it. So for looks, I'm going to give this a 9 out of 10. First of my new categories, build quality. You know, it's solid. It's a solid pen. You can tell that you've spent $200 on it. It works really nicely. It all fits nicely. The cap just slides on. Had no problems with the threads or anything like that. I say I'm going to be very, 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 very picky here. I don't like the way the band and the clip are lined up. I'd have actually liked to have seen... The 3776 there, that being the central part. But again, I'm being very picky. So for build quality, I've got no major issues, 9 out of 10. Writing experience. It feels nice in the hand. It feels nice to use. A little bit on the thin side, but not enough to bother me. A little bit on the short side unposted. Again, not enough to bother me. It works quite well. If I post it, feels comfortable. Nice to use for long writing sessions when it's posted. I like the feedback. I like what we're getting when I was writing that. Hopefully you heard that when I was doing my sentence. It just feels so nice. Yes, that nib's stiff, but you can feel the writing through it. And to me, I really enjoy it. I enjoy the tactile nature of writing. Writing experience, 9 out of 10. Ink flow. Had absolutely no issues with the ink flow. I don't get any problems with hard starts, with skipping. I had loads of different inks in this. With some of my previous inks, I have struggled. Yes, this Arts Blood, I'm quite enjoying it. So I think this is, it's more suited to more highly saturated inks. I have tried some of the less saturated ones. I just did not like the results I was getting. The line is thin. It's what I expect. It's Japanese medium, so I'm not surprised. So for ink flow, well, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Next new category, comfort. How does it feel when I'm writing? As I've just said, it feels okay. It's nice. It feels okay when it's posted. It's nice. It's enjoyable to hold. Not too thin. Yes, it would have been nice if that section was a little bit thicker, but that's just me being exceptionally picky. The section, it looks like it's on the short side, but when you hold it, it's not. Feels really nice and comfortable. So for comfort, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. Value for money. Well, it's $200. Nobody can say that's a cheap pen. In fact, 
you might be struggling to argue to say it's a mid-range pen in terms of price. It's a lot to pay. It is one of the cheapest gold nib pens I've got. I do have one other gold nib pen, which is about half the price of this, but that was from China and the nib feels nothing like this. This nib is so nice to write with compared to that Chinese one. The Chinese one works okay, don't get me wrong, but it's just pleasurable to use. I've already said we need to have the right ink in it. This Ox blood is working well. I may next try writer's blood. Be interesting to see how that goes. So value for money, I say it's a lot of money, but taking into account the gold nib and everything that comes with it, taking into account the fact that it writes nice, lets me get ideas out of my head onto paper in a way that I enjoy, I'm going to give this an 8 out of 10. So that means the total score for this pen and ink combo is 8.5 out of 10. And on my scorecard that you can see on the screen now, you can see I've updated this. So I'm also included on there the ink as well as my new categories. So this has been my fountain pen focus of the Platinum 3776 Century with Diamine Otzblood. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Have you got a Platinum 3776? Which model have you got? What are your thoughts about it? How about the nibs? I know there's a lot of different nib variety for this pen. What are your thoughts on the different pens? And are there some nibs that you think I may enjoy more? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Please hit that thumbs up button every time you like, every time you comment. Well, it just helps with the YouTube algorithm. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.